The Coin Week podcast is sponsored by PCGS. For more than 30 years, the standard in the rare coin grading industry. Celebrate the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II by getting special limited edition inserts on your V75 Privy Mark, World War II coins, and World War II 75th anniversary medals. These coins are the hottest thing in the American numismatic landscape right now, and you will not want to miss this opportunity to take advantage of a special program from PCGS. Visit www.pcgs.com to learn more. This week on the Coin Week podcast, ancient coin writer Mike Markowitz gives an informative talk about ancient coin weight standards and how this important information helps modern collectors and dealers ascertain a coin's authenticity. It's a valuable talk for all of us trying to navigate this market rich in history and littered with potential fakes. Mike Markowitz is next on the Coin Week podcast. This is Mike Markowitz for Coin Week. I'd like to talk about a heavy subject today, ancient weight standards and why they matter for coin collectors. When we're trying to determine whether an ancient or medieval coin is authentic or not, one of the first questions an expert numismatist will ask is, what does this thing weigh? If the weight is all wrong for the type or for the era of history, that's pretty strong evidence that there's something wrong with the coin. The little digital electronic scale has become an essential accessory for most serious ancient coin collectors. Most ancient mint authorities were pretty fussy about the weight standards they used. So it's useful for collectors to know something about the history of metrology, the study of weights and measures. It turns out that people are really not very good at estimating or comparing the weight of small objects. Before the rise of market economies, people measured things mainly by volume. A handful or a heap or a bushel or a cartload was close enough. The need to weigh small things very precisely It's something that emerges fairly late in the history of civilization. There's two kinds of commodities that require precision weighting. Strong drugs and rare spices, and precious metals and gemstones. The pan balance was probably invented around 3000 BCE in Mesopotamia to facilitate trade by weighing small objects against accepted standard weights. There's a famous illustration in the Egyptian Book of the Dead from around 1285 BCE that shows the weighing of the heart. The god Anubis beside an enormous pan balance. If the heart of the deceased in one pan balances a feather in the other pan, It's judged to be free from the weight of sin, and the deceased is welcomed into the afterlife. Ancient commercial weights made of stone or bronze, lead or glass survive in considerable numbers, and they often appear as collectibles in major numismatic auctions. On some Roman coins, we see a female figure holding a pan balance. That's uh, justice, justitia, or equity, equitas, the personifications of those abstract principles. There's a little picture of a pan balance that appears on every American banknote as part of the Treasury Department seal. Let's talk about the Babylonian weight system. One of the earliest weight standards, and one that eventually becomes very important for ancient coinage, is the so-called Babylonian system, which seems to have first emerged under the Akkadian Empire, which rules Mesopotamia, what's now Iraq, from 
2334 to 2154 BCE. The Phoenicians, who were the great international trading people of the ancient world, adopted Babylonian weight standards, and they transmitted them in turn to the Hebrews, the Greeks, and many other people who modified the system in various ways that we'll talk about later. This was what we call a sexagesimal system. Don't get excited. That has nothing to do with sex. It's based on multiples of the number 60. The reason we still have 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and 360 degrees in a circle, we can thank the ancient Babylonians for that. The basic weight unit in the Babylonian system was a barley grain weighing about 150 milligrams. For comparison, a standard aspirin tablet is 350 milligrams. 180 barley grains, 3 times 60, equaled 1 shekel, about 8.4 grams or one-third of an ounce. For comparison, a U.S. nickel coin weighs exactly 5 grams, and the current British 10 pence coin weighs 6.5 grams. 60 shekels equals 1 mina, weighing about 504 grams. 60 mina equals 1 talent, 30.2 kilograms or... 66 pounds and 9 ounces. One talent was sometimes described as the maximum practical load for a donkey to carry. The sacred menorah or lamp stand and its accessories in the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem was specified to be made from one talent of pure gold. Exodus Chapter 25, verse 39. Now, depending on the climate and the fertility of the soil, barley grains, when dry, can vary widely in weight. So this might account for the proliferation of different standards for the weight of the shekel. There's at least five different shekel weight standards in the Bible ranging all the way from about 7 grams all the way up to 17, used for different purposes at different times in different places. When coinage comes into wider use in the Near East, probably the best-known shekel coin was the shekel issued by the Phoenician trading city of Tyre on the coast of Lebanon, It was struck from very pure silver, so it was widely accepted in trade. It weighed about 14.4 grams. These coins bear the head of Melkart, a local city god the Greeks identified with Heracles. On the reverse, we see a standing eagle with a Greek inscription around it that translates as of Tyre the Holy and Inviolable. And there's a date in Greek numerals beginning from 126 BCE as year one, when the city began issuing these coins. Another very famous shekel coin was issued by the Jewish rebels who rose up against Roman rule in the year 66. The obverse of the coin shows a ritual cup with the Hebrew inscription Shekel of Israel and a date that starts with year 1 as 66. Year 5 coins from the bitter end of the rebellion are extremely rare. The reverse of the coin is a pomegranate branch with three buds. Inscribed around it is Jerusalem the Holy. These coins range from about 13.5 to 14.4 grams, same as the shekel of Tyre. The currency unit of the modern state of Israel is still called the shekel. 
currently worth about 30 cents U.S. Let's talk a little about the weight standards of the ancient Greeks. The classical culture of ancient Greece was based on city-states that were fiercely independent. So it's not surprising that there were many different local weight standards for coinage, one of the earliest weight standards was called Aegineton, from the name of the city of Aegina, A-E-G-I-N-A, which was the first Greek city to issue silver coins in large quantities. This standard was based on a unit called the obol, weighing about 1.05 grams, and six obols make a drachma of 6.3 grams. Drachmai is the actual Greek plural, if you want to show off, but English-speaking numismatists usually say drams as the plural. 100 drachmai make a mina of 630 grams. 60 minai make a talent. The Greek word is talenton, of about 38 kilograms, or 83.16 pounds, under the Aegeanitan standard. After the city of Athens conquered Aegina in 458 BC, the most important weight standard by far becomes the so-called Attic standard. Now, this has nothing to do with the little room under the roof of a house, the name comes from Attica, the geographic region in which Athens is located. It might be worth noting here that coin catalogs are usually arranged in order by ancient regions or provinces. So it's worth learning a bit about these to find your way around in coin catalog listings. The Attic weight standard is based on an obol of just 0 0.72 grams. Obolos is the Greek word for an iron roasting spit, an object that was used as a primitive form of money before the introduction of coinage. Six obols make one Attic drachma of 4.32 grams. The word drachma originally meant a handful. So the idea was that a drachma was a handful of six roasting spits, or six obols. 100 drachmae make a mina of 432 grams. For a comparison, our standard pound of 16 ounces is 454 grams. Modern uh, archaeological excavations in the Athenian agora or marketplace over the course of many years found numerous lead commercial weights, often inscribed with the name of the unit or a numeral. The Greeks used the letters of their alphabet as numerals so that alpha is 1, beta is 2, gamma is 3, and so on. 60 minai make one talent weighing almost 26 kilograms or 57 pounds in the Attic weight standard. In ancient sources, large sums of money are typically expressed in talents. We can see this in the parable of the talents in the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. A man traveling into a far country called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one talent, to every man according to his ability. There's an Alternate version of this parable recounted in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 11 to 27, using a mina rather than talent to express a large quantity of money. 
Now, the standard Athenian silver coin was the tetradram, or four drachma piece, weighing 17.2 grams. There were some massive and very rare decadrams, or 10 drachma pieces, weighing 43.2 grams. Uh, Every few years, when one of those comes on the market, it typically sells for uh, several hundred thousand dollars. The very smallest silver coin in the attic weight standard was one quarter of an obol called a tetardamorion, quite a mouthful for such a tiny coin, weighing just 0.15 grams or 150 milligrams. These coins measure just six or seven millimeters in diameter. Let's talk a little bit about the weight standards of the ancient Romans. Ancient Roman weights were based on a unit called the libra in Latin, often translated as pound in English. But this was a pound of just 12 ounces, or uncii, each ounce, 27.4 grams. Our abbreviation LB for pound is derived from the Latin word libra. The theoretical weight of the libra is known very exactly from ancient sources, 327.45 grams. But in practice, surviving commercial weights in good condition suggest that the actual values used in the market ranged from about 322 to 329 grams. The heavy cast bronze coins of the early Roman Republican era were based on the Libra and its fractions, such as the semis, one-half, the triens, one-third, and the sextans, one-sixth. Every educated Roman was fluent in Greek, and Romans defined their Libra as equivalent to three-quarters of an Athenian mina. And the Roman ounce, or uncia, was equivalent to eight Greek drachmae in weight. The Roman uncia was subdivided into 24 tiny units, each one called the scrupulum, 1.14 grams. Not that different from the Greek obol. Scrupulum means a small pebble in Latin. The scrupulum was subdivided into six units, each called a siliqua, weighing 0.19 grams, 190 milligrams, which was the weight of one seed of the carob tree. That would be 144 carob seeds to one Roman ounce. The scientific name of the carob tree is Keratonia siliqua. There is a very rare Roman gold coin that's known as a nine siliqua piece, also called a one and a half scrupulum piece. We don't know why it was issued, but it only circulated for a short time in the fourth century. There is also a very common late Roman silver coin called the siliqua by numismatists because it was worth one siliqua weight of gold. The unit called a carat that we still use for weighing diamonds and precious metals is derived from the carob seed because it was a practice to weigh gold and gemstones against the seeds of this tree, which grows throughout the Mediterranean world. This system is eventually standardized, and one carat is still fixed at the weight of 0.2 grams. 
Now, there's a carob tree that grows on a corner near my house. And a few years ago, I picked up a few fallen seed pods and weighed some of the seeds. And sure enough, they all fall within a few milligrams of two-tenths of a gram. The late Roman gold coin called a solidus weighed as much as 24 carob seeds, 4.5 grams. As a result, the carat also becomes a measure of purity for gold. 24 carat means there's 24 carats of gold in the solidus. It's 100% pure. 18 carat gold means there's 18 carats of gold in your solidus. It's 75% pure, the other 25% being silver or copper. Roman coinage regulations often specified exactly how many coins of a particular denomination were to be struck from a pound of precious metal at the mint. The Roman gold aureus was originally struck at a standard of 40 to the pound. The emperor Nero, who ruled from 54 to 68 CE, reduced this to 45 to the pound. By the time of Emperor Caracalla, 211 to 217, it was 50 to the pound. Emperor Diocletian, who ruled from 284 to 305, made the standard 60 to the pound. This standard only lasted for a short time because Constantine I introduced the solidus around 312, struck at 72 to the pound, so the coin was 4.5 grams of quite pure gold. And in late Roman sources, large quantities of money are often expressed not by counting the coins, but in terms of Roman pounds of gold. So you multiply by 72 to get an estimate of how many coins were counted out. There is a late Roman silver coin that weighs about 3 grams called the Argentius, which just means silver piece from the Latin word Argentum, meaning silver. On some of these coins, the Roman numeral XCVI, meaning 96, appears in big, bold letters surrounded by a wreath across the reverse of the coin. This told the users that 96 of these coins were struck from one Roman pound of silver. Let's talk a little bit about weight standards in the medieval era. After the collapse of the Roman Empire in the West in the last quarter of the 5th century, there was a breakdown of trade and urban economic life. Without a strong central authority to enforce uniform market weight standards, a variety of local standards sprang up based on traditional tribal units. Many of these were based on the weight of one grain of wheat. A dry grain of wheat taken from the center of the ear. And traditionally, four grains of wheat were equivalent to three grains of barley, or one carat. There is a modern weight system called the apothecary weight system, once used by uh, druggists, which is close to some of these medieval standards. In the apothecary system, the weight of one grain is equivalent to 64.8 milligrams. One grain is a very small unit. The silver English penny, or sterling, was specified to weigh 32 grains of wheat. And this unit is called the penny weight, equal to 1.55 grams. 20 penny weights make the ounce, 
and 12 ounces or 240 pence make a pound. There's an important medieval weight unit that was often used to express large sums of money. And this was the mark defined as half a pound of silver or about 234 grams, although this varied from place to place. The Troy weight system, which we still use today for weighing precious metals, is ultimately based on Roman weights as modified for use in the medieval world. The price of gold and silver are still expressed in dollars or UK pounds or euros per troy ounce, even in countries that use the metric system for most other purposes. A troy ounce is 31.103 grams approximately, about 10% more than our standard ounce. Now, the name Troy has nothing to do with the Trojan War. It's said to derive from the city of Troyes in the Champagne region of central France, where a great international trade fair was held every summer, beginning in the 12th century. If you'd like to know more, here are a few references that I found helpful in understanding this subject. Algernon Berryman, Historical Metrology, New York, 1953. Arthur Klein, The Science of Measurement, A Historical Survey, New York, 1988. Ian Whitelaw, a Measure of All Things, The Story of Man and Measurement, New York, 2007. For Coin Week, this is Mike Markowitz. Good hunting. If you like this podcast, please share it with your friends. Remember, you can download every episode of the Coin Week podcast for free on the iTunes store, or you can stream it online on coinweek.com or on our YouTube channel. For Coin Week, I'm editor Charles Morgan. Until next time, happy collecting.